Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a dynamic storm system that's gonna bring severe weather, including tornadoes, damaging winds, and large hail with flooding rains as it moves from west to east throughout the week. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So good morning, everyone. That is Sunday, April the 25th. It's actually my birthday. It's a beautiful day out here in Dallas. There's not a cloud in the sky, but all eyes are gonna be out west. Now, this is the satellite picture this morning off the west coast in the Pacific, where we've got this developing upper level storm system uh, that's gonna bring all of our weather, weather uh, this week to the US. It's got some very cold air along with it as, as well. It's bringing some much needed precipitation back here off the west coast into California. That'll eventually dive down into Southern California again and creep into portions even to the desert Southwest with some much uh, needed rain. If we expand the view and pull us back into the US, we see that initial system that brought all that severe weather down into Texas and much of the Southeast and off the East Coast here. That is now swinging off the East Coast and what the residual effects is left over. We've got uh, not severe, just some showers and you know, some isolated thunderstorms that's happening right now off the East Coast. Brought some rain earlier into New York City. That's now extending further into uh, New England and that'll run up the coast uh, later on today up into Maine. And on the back side, yeah, that's our second, that's our developing system that's moving on off the West Coast there's your precipitation and some of this is even in the form of snow with that colder air uh, coming back in the picture off the west coast uh, here's what the satellite picture would look on look like later on today well, as far as the surface map uh, you can see that developing low pressure that'll extend and continue to lift off to the northeast as we turn our attention back out to the west there's your snow coming back into the picture off in the higher elevations in the mountain regions and there's your precipitation that's coming off the west coast with that uh, upper level low that we're going to be talking about that's going to be extending throughout the week but yeah add ahead of it here's your warmer temperatures surging from the south there's those colder temperatures to the north we've got 50s for much of the pacific northwest you can see where the jet stream buckles is we got 40s hanging tight in the dakotas and much of uh wisconsin going into michigan and where they've got those rain showers up in New England, they're going to be holding into the 50s and lower 60s later on today. But yeah, that warm surge out ahead of it, you've got 90s coming back into Texas, 80s approaching all the way back, get back into uh, Kansas as we've got mid 70s for much of the southeast. So as we go into Monday, here's the surface map. We've got that developing trough that digs a little bit further uh, south. That's bringing the snow line a little bit further south, the precipitation a little bit further south, as we've got those warmer temperatures out ahead of it. So it's high and dry for much of the central uh, U.S. and much of the southeast on uh, Monday as those temperatures continue to surge. And now we're talking, I mean, I can't believe we were talking, you know, record cold temperatures, not just a few days ago. And the weather changes pretty big time in April. And it's, yeah, no question. We're back in almost 90 degrees in Kansas. I mean, 90 degrees in Nebraska. Those warm temperatures continue to surge, getting back into the 80s in Iowa, much of the 80s. So we have, you know, mid 70s today for the southeast, We're going back into the low to mid 80s for much of Monday. As back behind it, you can see those colder temperatures continuing uh, to shift a little bit further south, some 40s uh, showing up in the high elevations of Nevada. So yeah, it's got some very cold air uh, along with it that's going to be diving in off the west coast. And where there's, there's cold, it's going to be cold enough to snow into some of the higher elevations, especially well, that'll bring the snow line back into Colorado, into the mountain regions, as that developing trough will start to uh, get, get towards the dry line as we get towards uh, Tuesday. And that's when things start to kind of really start to get cranking up. I would imagine uh, start lining up somewhere in the high plains of uh, West Texas. But yeah, at ahead of it, we've got those warmer temperatures to deal with. And I think that's why you got the dew point surging. You got the temperatures elevating back into the 80s, back into the 90s in Texas. We've got that developing cold trough diving in off the West. And look at these colder temperatures. If you kind of zoom in, I mean, 72 in Las Vegas, 
73 in Phoenix. Those are high temperature, folks, for the desert southwest. Man, that's going to feel incredible for you guys out there. Uh, but even, uh, you know, much colder back in the Flagstaff with the 40s uh, showing up. But man, out ahead of it, that's where that clash and the temperature gradient we're going to have to be dealing with. And that's going to be our culprit for our severe weather uh, outbreak. I do feel that's going to happen, you know, as we go into later on today on Tuesday, especially into Tuesday night. And the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted a slight risk for severe weather for much of the high plains out here in West Texas, uh, getting into uh, Oklahoma, going into portions of uh, Kansas. So basically Oklahoma City, Wichita, Kansas, getting to, into Lubbock, into Abilene, going into Norman, Oklahoma. You could be under the gun for all three modes of severe weather. And even portions of the Dallas could see a marginal risk. And it's more, more of a, a nighttime and an overnight threat as you go into Dallas. Uh, but yeah, you could still see some stronger th thunderstorms getting to Dallas, into Fort Worth, going into Tulsa. Uh, Arlington back into Plano here and much of the uh, suburbs of, of the Dallas Fort Worth area and they're going to be including all three modes of severe weather especially out west where they have a what they call a hatched risk for very large hail there's gonna be a lot of updrafts with this system there's gonna be a lot of shear with this system and yes it could be conducive of some very large hailstones of talking two inch diameter or better in, in portions of the Lubbock, getting into Midland, uh, getting into Odessa again, uh, Big Springs, going into Plainview. So this area out here off, uh, off uh, out west into Wex, Texas, you could be under the gun, under this hatch, which is a very large hell. And this is also going to be the prime setup of tornadoes, unfortunately. So you got to be looking out for that. There's going to be a lot of rotation uh, in the atmosphere with this setup. And that, that will extend into portions of uh, Oklahoma as we go throughout the evening, uh, getting into Kansas. So definitely hunker down for Tuesday, Tuesday night, if you're out here in the West Texas for those strong uh, supercell uh, thunderstorms. But with this system, man, look at the tornadoes that's uh, happened so far this year. Technically, we are actually below average. We average about 1,253 tornadoes on a yearly basis. Here's the chart over the last, uh, going all the way back to 2005. We was just, we were just about average uh, last year. 2019 was a, was above an above average year of 1,600 tornadoes. Obviously our highest year in the last 15 years was 2011, where that we had over 2,200 uh, tornadoes but here's the graph where we stand right now and the black is your average and this is where the red is where we stand right now so technically we are actually below average as far as the tornado front but we're going into that six week time frame of the most active period of and uh, for uh, for tornadoes so this could really ramp up if conditions become you know the timing gets you know right ripe and it does look like we'll be adding to that tornado count unfortunately as we go into Tuesday and Tuesday night with that system out here off into West Texas. And, and that system will slow down. I mean, it's gonna be a very slow moving system. So that's gonna bring some flooding rains where these darker greens start to show up in Dallas, Fort Worth, getting into Oklahoma, getting into portions of Arkansas, getting into portions of Missouri. That system will definitely slow down. We've got the water content values showing, you know, one, to two inches rainfall rates per hour and this in these areas we're going into the you know the wettest time frame of the year you know where we average you know four to five inches just normal precipitation on a monthly basis and a lot of this in texas and oklahoma and arkansas missouri so it's no stranger to get uh, some flooding rains in this time frame but yeah this this is uh, with this slow moving system i'm definitely very concerned as we go into wednesday especially into wednesday night where this could really slow down and set up convective training that it would include flooding rains possible into the dallas fort worth area and that will extend into portions of uh, oklahoma as that system just stalls here's your water content values by Wednesday night. And yeah, look at the extremes here or look at the charts of, you know, going into two inches per hour. That's the, the available precipitation water content that the atmosphere is able to produce uh, as this system put, moves over. Now, like I mentioned, it's gonna be a very slow moving. And by Wednesday night, we could be looking at some flooding rains setting up in and around the Dallas Worth area portions, probably maybe south 
going into Oklahoma with some very heavy rains uh, setting up. We could be looking at possibly flash flood watches in these areas uh, by then as this convective banding kind of trains over the same area. So I'm definitely uh, concerned about uh, flooded rains and severe weather is gonna be an aspect of it too. So here's the temperatures. Here's your high temperatures on uh, Wednesday, the 28th. Now we're looking at temperatures back into the 80s for much of the south as that cold air tries to keep penetrating further further south. It's gonna, it's gonna kind of lose its luster as you know deeper into late April. Those colder temperatures will start to modify out west, bringing some little bit warmer air back into the picture out west, or that as that as those warm temperatures will continue to hang on for much of the southeast. So this is your narrow banding here, right? This area where we're going to be set up for you know some heavier rains and possibly severe weather as we extend going into Wednesday, especially into Thursday, as our wind shear elements are getting high. Uh, where that jet stream really buckles down and digs up, we could be looking at uh, strong, severe thunderstorms arcing through, the, even getting up portions of the Ohio Valley now as uh, these, these warm temperatures will have plenty of warmth to deal with. You'll have those higher dew points. So I do feel this could be a little bit further north severe weather threat than what we've seen so far. That we could be looking at severe weather going up all the way into the Ohio Valley by the time we get into... Uh, Thursday, here's your setup where the severe weather could be lie uh, by Thursday, getting into Oklahoma, going into portions of you know Kansas here, into Missouri, going into the Ohio Valley. We could be under the gun for uh, severe weather that we that what that over that jet stream overhead as that system continues to dive down to the southeast. Those flooding rains will continue. Uh, some heavier rains still back into Texas. So, I mean, once it starts in Dallas, I mean, you're talking Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday, it might even not get out of here until Friday because it's still going to be kind of, you know, slow. It's a slow moving system, you know, throughout the week. So I don't really expect this to go anywhere anytime, you know, very fast. We've got blocking up here off uh, off into the northeast here so that's going to allow that system to slow down and be a very slow mover mover throughout the week as it continues moving from west to east there's your look by friday where the severe weather front could possibly be that'll be extending a little bit further southeast getting into uh, portions louisiana getting into some of the southeast corridor getting into uh, kentucky uh, you know, Tennessee Valley, but these, yeah, this could extend in Ohio Valley and it could clip portions of the mid Atlantic states, even into getting into portions of uh, the, the Northeast uh, states as well. As that jet stream will be overhead by then, as we go into Friday with some stronger storms, that system will continue diving down, down to the Southeast as we go throughout the week. There's the precipitation where it could fly down, you know, by Friday afternoon. Well down south and, you know, portions of Houston training along the southeast, getting into uh, the, the mid-Atlantic states off the coast of the Carolinas here. And then there's your precipitation by uh, Friday going in towards the end of the month. And yeah, there's your setup off the dry line into West Texas. And those flooding rains will kind of sit and stall and dump some very heavy rains. I'm thinking two to four inches in and around the Dallas Worth area, in and around Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma area, uh, throughout the week. So we're talking possibly, you know, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday type of event for much of Dallas, getting into Central Texas, going into Oklahoma, and yeah, those heavier rains uh, will extend all the way into the uh, Missouri and where that banding sets up. It's a little bit of uncertainty up here in the Ohio Valley where where that arc is going to be because here's your Here's your European model and the GFS model has it stalling somewhat further south and doesn't extend as much into the Ohio Valley. Like I said, it's a little bit uncertain with just the slow moving nature of the system. Where I'm more certain is what back into Texas, uh, getting into Oklahoma and back into Arkansas. The uncertainty lies as we go deeper throughout the week. Uh, into Thursday and to Friday, where this is going to be setting up just because of the slow moving nature of this system. 
and look at the snow line as as we end the month of April where that colder air is going to fly. Much of this is going to be in the mountain regions and we could be looking at some very heavy snow back in the foothills of uh, Colorado and some ski resorts are still going to be happy as that snow continues to fly uh, well out west. So hey man, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.